I have come to spark stages, light the dark places, shout my pages outrageous. Verbs of power on the hour like a thunder shower. Not he frightened by the lightning, hiding under towers. I know they see me cause I'm glowing like safety orange. Don't try to screw me like porn or you'll get the horns. I'm a bull so I recognize the bull quick. You can save all your preaching for your pool kick. Beam. When I hit the scene, light up the street when I move my feet like I'm Billy Jean. These suckers trembling, gremlins howling light bright. I knock them out of they timberlands with a tight right. They steady grimming but feminine in the right light. They pick a fight, ain't no might, they going night, night. They stumble into that tunnel seeking that white light. They cannot roll on this coaster, they not the right height. Illuminated, not Illuminati, didn't sell my soul for no blue Bugatti This no nonsense, it's true and righteous That's why them devils do not like this I glow in the dark, rockin' all black Fall back, I'm exact like an almanac I fly so straight with great agility I'm so high with visibility You best check my credibility I will wreck your whole facility I'll take full responsibility But will not take no liability Glowing like I'm radioactive Flowing to keep your radio active Knowing that my lady attractive Plus you I know, know I'm the main attraction When he step into the snow when it's 50 below Yo, I've been known to make dough From Ontario down to south of Mexico Bro, I am on the next plateau I'll allow no hoes to my next chateau All y'all ready, vominoes Foes fall like dominoes You see me like LED You watching me like a TV DVD in HD Congratulate, don't hate on me Lemon lime, bright neon Prime time, like Dion My rhymes are free on the future king He's called Keon Oh, yes, bitches. And that was Glow in the Dark by Awesome Dre. He's just dropped a new album or EP, actually, that's out and available. This is the Nothing Sacred interview with Awesome Dre, which we have Awesome Dre on the phone. And I am Maxwell Silverhammer. I'm Cruise Control. <laughs> and Dre is on the phone. What's going on, man? What up, though? What up, though, fellas? Appreciate y'all having me on here, man. What up, though, world? What's happening? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, I want to ask you, what does ADEP stand for? It stands for Awesome Dre EP. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. Well, yeah, know, basically, gonna... man, that was it, man. I was trying to just keep it real simple, man. I ain't want to, like, name it after one of the songs. I couldn't choose one. They all kind of stand on their own for me. So I just, probably, I just tried to keep it very, very simple, man. You know, the Awesome Dre extended play, you know. And just 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 leave it at that, you know. You know, it's funny. I thought it was you were gonna say something like "Awesome Dre educating punks" or something. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, <laughs> hey, you know that's all good though. I might have to steal that one, man. <laughs> hey, you're, you're welcome to it, man. Well, if he had a lot, if he had a lot, <laughs> of, stuff, a lot of chick songs, it could have been "Awesome Dre eating pussy." You know, whatever. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Even <Yeah>. better. <laughs> Yeah, and that's cool. I'm going to leave it up to everybody, man. They can just go ahead and put their own little interpretation on it, man. it will be sweet, man, as long as they they like the music, man. They can call it whatever. (laughs) Right. Actually, man, i got to tell you, I am in debt to you tonight, Dre, because I almost got drugged to a, um, you know, one of those MLM parties. Yeah, yeah. 
they try to get you to buy some shit. And uh, yeah. but they you know they paint it as oh it's a party. It was supposed to be matter of fact it was supposed to be at the Jacksons residence, which uh, the Jacksons are from oh. Detroit originally, aren't they? Uh, Gary Indiana, I think. But they you know they was here recording man a whole lot man actually down the street from where I grew up at you know I grew up right down the street from Motown Museum. Um, right on Woodrow Wilson and, um, off 12th, uh, 12th Street with, you know, West Grand Boulevard, um, and 12th Street. And that's where I'm from, man. Anybody that have been to Detroit know that, you know, you visit Motown Museum, then you was like walking distance. You was like a block from where I grew up, you know. So that's, uh, you know, yeah, that's, that's the history of that right there. Uh, but well, yeah, is- the Jackson's, they, I didn't saw Michael Jackson up there down the street so many times that it was like, it was old hat to us, you know. The first couple of times it was like it was like the Jackson Five, you know, Michael Jackson down the street. We're like, oh yeah, yeah. We went up there, you know. Everybody came in from all around the world, you know, come up there, you know. After a couple of times, it was just like, oh, you know, Michael Jackson down the street again. Oh, okay, cool. What uh, what else going on? <laughs> but you know, but that, you, you're right. I mean, but you know, for us, it was all like we got that secondary because my mother and them they grew up actually while wow, Motown was in effect when it was live, you know, it was actually up in the recording and they was like, went to school with a lot of the artists and stuff like that. So, you know, but, you know, so I was raised, um, you know, with that, like, not only just in, in my blood or in the family, just like, you know, man, it was always music around, man. So we had the good influences, man, coming up in Detroit, you know, with the Motown, um, you know, history behind us. Now, coming from Vegas, man, I got to say, uh, originally from Vegas, I'm up in Oregon now, man, but Detroit is Detroit has gotten a, Detroit has not been a, a city that people like talk about, like, it's gotten a bad rap a lot of times, you know, you hear it a lot does, of shit man. about Detroit, like, uh, a lot right. of jokes and like, a lot of messed up shit, so sometimes, uh, I guess, that does that, uh, does that bug you, or does that, uh, what does that make you feel about it, or do you just like say, ah, they, people just don't understand because they're not from here, or how does that, how do you react to all that negative man. shit about Detroit? Fuck anybody that say anything negative about Detroit. Because most of the times, nine times out of ten, they never was here. They never lived here. They never experienced this shit. They just seen or heard from hearsay. And, you know, negativity, you know, is more uh, newsworthy than anything that's uh, positive. So, yeah, we get a bad rap. And it's like, but at the same time, it's like, man, Detroit is the birthplace of like a lot of things that uh, people take for granted, even in America, as far as to being the first this and that, or, you know, pioneering in different areas or fields. I'm not just talking about music or anything. Like I'm talking about life in general. I mean, Detroit is a very old city, man, founded in 1701. I mean, Detroit sitting on top of like one of the, the largest, like, crystal salt mines on home you know in america man we got like so much energy shooting through us man you get you get the good the bad the ugly everything in between so just as people say it's a lot of negative things going on here, there's a lot of positive things going on here and it's a lot of uh great uh you know minds mm-hmm. that had to that you know came out of detroit and birthed uh a lot of things in america As a matter of fact it's a song i got a double it's a song coming out that well i'm gonna put out that's really giving a history it's not just a detroit history lesson it's a michigan history lesson man to let you know a lot of the things that were we were responsible for um bringing to america you know just being that we were one of the oldest cities one of the oldest states um you know, it's just a lot of things. I don't even want to start off with it now because it's like a snowball effect. But <laughs> it's a lot of things that I had that I learned after doing the research on it. That You know, we grew up with knowing a lot of the basic uh, things that we have, uh, you know, brought here, you know, uh, to Detroit, to the world. But, you know, that song or those songs, because it's probably going to have to be a part one and two on that right off the bat because it was so much that I, I found wow. out. But, man, yeah, that, that negative uh, reputation is, um, I don't know why, man, because... Um, you know, Detroit is unique, man, and uh, everybody loves People who've been here and experienced it want firsthand love it, man. Once they can see, you know, really what it's about and, you know, meet the people and see, you know, the spirit and, you know, the feel the love here, man. But it's tough. It's rough. But at the same time, that's what creates the best, you know, uh, the pressure, you know, creates that, that finest diamond, man. So, yeah, a lot of things here go on here, man, that's kind of crazy and wild, but... You know, it makes us stronger. It makes us, you know, uh, more resilient, man, and more resourceful to be able to make things happen because there's a lot of shit, you know, that's stacked against us that they try to do on purpose to hold us back. But at the same time, they can't do that, man, because shit, 
that the cream going to rise to the top, man, no matter what. But, uh, you know, like yeah. I say, I, I, I'm born here, but I lived in Ohio. I graduated in Akron. You know, I love, uh, you know, I love traveling. I'm not, I never was one to ever just stay in one city and just, you know, I know people that's in the city that ain't never been across town or not. You know what I'm saying? So, but I'm not, I have been around the world. So I was like, I didn't experience it. So I don't take, I don't just listen to what people say. I know I, I take it firsthand. I go there and I see and I walk, you know, I, I beat the streets. I'll be on the pavement where I'm, where I'm at. I don't just be out. Oh, you, you went to LA. Yeah. I was in like South central and Compton. You know what I'm saying? I was up in there. I wasn't out in, I was in Beverly Hills too, but we came back to the hood. I seen the hood. You can't come. Like people say, I went to Detroit, but you wasn't in Detroit. You was in Auburn Hills somewhere out there, you know, in the suburbs, you never came and saw what was really going on in Detroit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a difference, though. But just experience it before you can really um, make your judgments or whatever, just based on what the media uh, and, and the hype say. You know, it, it's it's the best of both worlds in this motherfucker, man. Like, it's some fucked up shit, yeah, but it's some good shit, too. <laughs> you know what? It's, it's, it's kind of like Vegas, man. The same thing where people go to the Strip and they think they've experienced Vegas, and it's like, no, there's a right. lot there's a world outside the Strip, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Right, a whole city, right, right. Mm -hmm. So... But, you know, speaking of pioneers, man, you being the first rapper out of Detroit, as far as that I know, you know what I mean, and uh, mm -hmm. going way back. And I'll tell you, man, you have been the phantom rapper, because is this the first project you've actually dropped since uh, AD's Revenge? Uh, no, in between that, I put out um, a project called Top Tens, Austin Dre's Top Tens, Um in between that, you know, and then worked on a couple of different projects with a couple of uh, different artists, you know, but yeah, this is like really the one that I put out, you know, in about, shoot, in about five, six years, though, still, you know, so it's been a long time coming, man, and it's crazy, though, but because I'm sitting on a fucking gold mine of unreleased material, man, um, from way back in, even, you know, more recently, too, but we just make, you know, getting the outlet, man, and be able to bring it back out here now man and so we just start gonna start giving it to y'all again but yeah man it's, it's been a minute man but you, you this shit is something your, that i can't give up you gotta feed your crackhead fans like me man i'm, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like what was, was taking a shit in the studio and and, and you can hear me now? i'm buying that motherfucker <laughs> you know? oh, man. Yeah, so man, like, i got some shit but i got some shit for y'all for sure yeah. So yeah. speaking of uh, speaking of the uh, of of the stuff, the new stuff you put out. So glow in the dark is that that's the first song we were listening to, uh, and uh, yeah. and I noticed like like you it's you still you keep that that feel, man, that old school feel to your stuff, man, which is great because it seems like like you still like like really enjoy the the structure of a rhyme. It seems like that's kind of a lost art uh, in terms of right. a lot of hip hop today because no one seems to care about. You know, like actual rhyme, like rhyming structure and actual complicated <laughs> rhyme. You know what I'm saying? Man, like, like, you're right. There's, and it, hell, well, I mean, it's not that. that. It's not that they don't seem no, they don't care about it. But it seems like that's the only thing the media and history want to promote. You know, his lyricists out here ain't never went nowhere. I mean, oh, yeah. no, they there. They call it, it's on the, what you call the underground or the street level, whatever you want to call it. But on the mainstream hype bullshit, commercialized programming of the radio stations. Yeah, they don't want to, they, they beyond that, they don't want to hear any type of intelligent, you know, type of creative, uh, you know, it has to be fit in a certain box that they have already set up for they, you know, agenda or whatever, but, you know, but at the same time, that lets me, that, that, most people just think that's what's, what it is, you know, if they listen to the radio, if they don't radio, then it ain't available, it ain't, it don't exist almost, it's like people like, oh, I saw it on the internet and all of that shit, don't make a damn difference, you know, people make shit up, but, yeah, it's, it's, this is out here, man. We've been we've been here. We ain't never went away, uh, but we just stopped being marketed, you know, promoted and marketed by the mainstream. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm I always was a lyricist, man. Um, and I take pride in that. Um, things when we came up, you know, biting was a cardinal sin. You you didn't take nobody else's um, mm -hmm. style. You didn't hear. You didn't sound like nobody. Um, even if you was born with that voice, if someone else go ahead and came out with it first, um, you have to change your voice now and come sound a little <laughs> different so you can distinguish yourself from the next man, even though that, that you know, naturally had the same type of sounding voice. You have to come with a different style, a different delivery, uh, things like that. And then, you know, I got to give credit to my producer, Killer Smooth, you know, because he's one of the coldest uh, producers, man, out here. And um, this guy, 
uh, producers, writes, sings, um, uh, mixes, masters, uh, arranges. You know, he, he had a yeah. This guy's out cold, so he keep me you know laced with all the latest um whatever kind of tracks I want. He hit you from any angle, and that's one thing I like about him that I could pick out like ten tracks, and you you you'll swear ten different producers made these beats. That's how how you know vast is his uh his shit is so uh but yeah we try to keep it together that's the one thing that i hate that i didn't get um dj los um he was uh, i suppose he would probably still go back on remix tip or whatever but i wanted him to have a cut on here but we didn't get it you know he got a couple of them done but we didn't get all of them done so i'm gonna hold off on them and we're gonna put them out on like remix or whatever because that's the only thing that i did you know that i wanted to have on this release before we got it out but at the same time man it's been so long man people was just like man we need it how it is raw dini right now so we just gave it to them but um yeah if anything else i would add on it would just be some cuts and y'all gonna hear them too because like i say a couple of them are already on there but we didn't have time to wait to get all of them done and i ain't want to have just a couple here or there so it might be a whole nother version dj you know with the cuts a version with the cuts who knows you know but we coming out with uh we getting uh, vinyl, CDs, all of that is coming uh, for this ADEP project, as well as a couple of um, other videos. The video that I had that maybe people have seen for the Glow in the Dark, actually, that's not an official video. That's actually something that I put together on my own, being bored at the at the house, man, with a free video editing program, that oh. Corel video suite thing or whatever, man. I downloaded it one day. I was bored, man. and. I liked it, man. I was trying to figure it out. So, you know, that's that's what that is. A lot of people don't know that. I didn't really put so it out there like that. it's not official Awesome Dre video, like, oh, yeah. Nah. <laughs> nah, it's not official, man. That was just something I was working on. It was like a personal project, pretty much. But I just put it out there just for the hell of it, because, hey, why not, you know? But like I said, we can always come back, hit him again in the head with it or whatever, with the official, uh, you know, uh, video. I mean, Chuck D told me a long time ago, man, make a video for every song you got. I don't care if it's just steel shots, you know, uh, slideshow type shit, because it's a video era. He told me this way back in the 90s, man. I was like, what the hell are you talking about, Chuck D? I don't even have a computer. <laughs> you know, but he was he's so ahead of everything. He knew about all of this stuff before it even really became as popular as it is. And um, like I said, he, he helped me out a lot, man. That's my brother. We I've been knowing him since we did... Uh, a rap city together way back in like 80 89 or whatever when i first met him and uh we've been on tour with them several times since then most recently in 2012 on a uh classic uh the hip-hop guys classic tour fest review which was the shit which out of my long you know so-called illustrious career that was the best experience i'd have had man so far as far as touring and <clears throat> we were out there with public enemy x clan Moni love schooly d uh, wise intelligent, uh, from poor righteous teachers, Dinko D, leaders of the new school, son of berserk, no self control, DJ Johnny Juice, Davey DMX. Oh, it was ridiculous, man. Um, every day we became like family out there, uh, on that tour. We, I was already cool with the PE fam, but just to get down with all the rest of those, those cats, man, like, like legends, pioneers, people I grew up listening to and uh, looking up to, and then we all, you know, come together to get out, put that tour together. It was the shit, man. Uh, every night, man, rocking it, sold out uh, shows, man. I, 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 man, I, woo, I'm telling you, man, I was the shit. I got to get it the P. It don't must be cool, stop, though. Man. It must be cool, though, man, mm -hmm. to be like, I mean, obviously, you know, you, you know, those guys were, were huge. You know what I'm saying? Public enemies. Were shit. Yeah. They still are. Now, I get you. I feel what you're saying, but shit, if you look and you follow them now, they never stopped touring, man. These guys have been over a hundred, like shit, a hundred and some tour. They're personal, you know, on tour. Every year, they never stop. I mean, they be globe trotting, man. They around the world. They doing these giant festivals. There's hundreds of thousands of people coming out. They doing, you know, they never stop. You know, he has um, <clears throat> rapcentralstation.com. That's his um, the rap, the uh, uh, website. That's uh, you know, they have the um, all of their sites up under and everything. And um, I got distribution through uh, one of their companies, Spit Digital Distribution, uh, digitally out here for uh, you know, with the other music that's available. And I mean, it's just shit. Yeah, Public Enemy, man, they ain't they ain't, they haven't really slowed down. You know, they 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 work as it gets ridiculous, man. And um, when you see them out on stage and performing, man, it just it just inspire you, hype you up, make you get up off your ass and try to do better on your own show. You know what I'm saying? So, 
It's, it's, yeah. it's ridiculous. They, Even to this day, stuff. they show us out cold. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. to this day. So, but yeah, that's so I was privileged to be able to, you know, uh, to come up under them, man, and be able to meet meet them and become friends and cool with them. And, you know, that that right there alone is just something, you know, I couldn't imagine, man. Just, grow, you know, a lot of shit, man, growing up listening to people like, you know, Grandmaster Melly Mel from the Furious Five, man. And then meeting them and, you know, and doing songs with them. You know, I got I got about three unreleased songs with him, man. Just is out cold, man. We sat here in United Billy Sounds uh, studio. Yeah, man. We we recorded them at United Sounds down here. Same same place that uh, Parliament Funkadelic recorded Flashlight and everything. The same room. And we got it all on video and everything, man. Of us sat down there writing the rap, raps right there on the spot, recording them, everything. So... You'll see all of that coming up too on a new, you know, documentary, man. And we have a lot of unreleased material on. But uh, yeah, man, it's like shit, man. I didn't, I didn't uh, have some good times, man. You know, uh, coming through here, and I plan on having some more, you know, as well, because uh, I love performing. I want to get back out here, you know, on the road to, you know, support this project. I definitely want to be overseas. That's the main thing that I want to do: get overseas this year and uh, and do some performances. So. Nice, you know, man. we'll see if we can make it happen. An untapped potential. Well, why don't we go ahead and get into Incinerate. This is the second track, I believe, on ADEP. Incinerate them. Yeah, incinerate yeah, incinerate them. So we're going to get into that. Mm-hmm. We'll be back with Awesome Dre on the Nothing Sacred interview in just a moment. Once again, this is Incinerate them from the album yeah. ADEP by Awesome Dre. Back in just a few. Yeah. Yeah. the tracks oh so cinematically while i defecate on these clowns so emphatically lame stop the chicanery it's a dirty shame to see all the stupid bamboozle buffoonery fakes we don't hate them we Coming through your speakers, incinerate ghouls and ghosts, the grim reaper. We don't play when we do, it's for keepers. Running fools off the road, jeepers, creepers. I ride rhythms like bad black stallions. Master Chief, the leader of my own battalion. You can tell by my handcrafted medallions. Yes, I'm a mobster, African, not Italian. Hit a warrior comes, rising from the slums with the bombs. Hit a warrior drums. Reciting verses to rout demons and break curses No doubt, foes stretched out in hearses Grim reality, just a formality Mortally wounding all these suckers, fatality We from the D, Detroit, Michigan You wishing that we won't win, then wish again Fakes, we don't hate them, we incinerate them Fakes, we don't hate them, we incinerate them Lames, we don't hate them, we incinerate them Bloodbath Is 
Incinerate him. Yeah, that was Incinerate him. Yeah. Off of EP. Mm-hmm. EP. Awesome yeah. Dre E. <laughs> and right, we got, right. We got Awesome Dre here hey. with us still. And uh, somebody, oh, yeah. you know, uh, what I was what I was trying to we're gonna say earlier is I think it's cool because you know even groups like Chaos and Maestro, um, right? You know, and fuck even KMC crew <laughs> who was from Detroit. Oh yeah, yeah. Devil you know, came down to Michigan. Yeah, well, even they actually were, they was from um they was from um they weren't from Detroit. They was from was they from Grand Rapids? I think it was from Grand Rapids. I think it was from oh. Grand Rapids. Yeah, or it might have been Saginaw Grand Rapids. I don't know. Was it Flint? I don't think it was Flint. It wasn't exactly Detroit, but they represented Michigan all together, though. Because when that came out, that song was so the shit. You know, it was all over the box. They had that video, that video show. You call the box where you call in, and then you know you order, you know, order the videos when you call in, pay pay the money and shit over the phone. Blow your mama and them phone up off of the damn map. You know, get cussed out. Be like, God damn it, my phone bill is five hundred dollars. What the fuck is this? And ordered the <laughs> shit out of your video. But yeah, they that that was a good ass record, man. We I, I, as a matter of fact, and I met him uh doo doo doo. It was about mm, about six years ago. I'm we in the studio, we was up in the studio A and he was happy to be in there, man. And um I didn't know him or recognize him or anything like that, but we just got to talking and he was like, Yeah, man, I used to rap, man, or I'd rap we put a song out back in the day, Devil came down. I was like, What? I was like, what you talking about, man? That's the shit, man. What you talking about, man? Hell yeah. yeah. See, that's, yeah, that's, that's, what that's funny you like, it. That's funny you mentioned them. Yeah. Well, you're still, you know, I guess what I was about to say is they had a huge hit, you know, but yet, yeah, that was is, a huge hit. You're still going and you've been performing with some of the biggest pioneers. So it, it just kind of shows that, uh, you know, not to, not to uh, take personal preference, but I think you're doing it right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I'm trying, man. This shit ain't easy, man. This shit rough. This shit up and down. It ain't really been consistent as what I thought, but as far as staying busy, but what has been consistent is that people still um, listening to and, you know, loving the music. So that's what's, what's the shit, you know, when the music can stand the test of time. Anytime we come out with a record, anybody come out with a record, they be like, yeah, this record's the shit, you know, the best shit you ever heard, blah, blah, blah. This shit is a classic, blah, 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 blah. And, okay, yeah, that sounds good and all that. Yeah, we supposed to say we the shit and all of that. But you don't determine whether your shit is a classic or not. The people do that shit after years go by. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? Right, yeah. If, your shit, if they still remember your shit by then and if it's still, you know, in their mind, you know, when they when make them feel good when they hear that shit or, you know, or it ain't so much as, so far, far back in the motherfucking mind that you, oh, yeah, just like when you mentioned that devil came in the bottom. Yeah, that was the shit. It was banging back when it was when it was playing. But since you, when you just mentioned it, I I haven't really thought about that song, you know, in a few years or, you know what I'm saying? Whatever oh, like yeah. that. It's, it's gone but to the, people the call me like, right, people call me like, you know, every so often. Oh man, they just had you on the radio. That shit was banging. You know what I'm saying? You know, on the on the, the, the throwback mix or however they do it or whatever. You know, I don't. It, whenever they just cool, but they be like calling me, telling me they be still hearing the record, or whatever. Whether it be the UK Hold Me Back or the Frankly Speaking or or something like that. You know, they they hear it, but it ain't like they haven't been reminded about it. And you know what I'm saying? At, at some point in time in the recent past, you know what I mean? It ain't like. Oh, I ain't thought about that song or that guy's name, or I ain't heard that guy's name or that song in so many, so many years. You know what I'm saying? It's like, no, you, my shit still bubble here and there, just in the circles of where or people talking about their life. You know, talk about what they, what how they come up or who influenced them in in hip hop, uh, especially in Detroit or whatnot. So, you know, my name is stay kind of on people's, um, you know, in people's mouth, and that's good. You know, so. But, I mean, it all boils down to the music because that's really what it's about. People don't know me. They don't know, you know what I'm saying? I, it ain't about me as a person, even though that's how a lot of people take it. Now they, they judge your career, whatever, about your personal life and your how much money you got, what kind of car you got. I mean, you know, all this bullshit we got you, you clothes you wear. That's some bullshit that it really shouldn't even matter. It's about the music. Your music good or not. Fuck what kind of clothes you, what kind of, what you look like, all of that shit. It don't fucking matter. <clears throat> when we come up, man, I'm, I'm, you know, from that real old school where the 12 inches, you know, came out. It was 
rare to even have a motherfucking picture on your 12 inch. We didn't know what the fuck KRS one looked like when we first started heard his music and all of that shit, and didn't give a damn. You know what I'm saying? And even right. get deeper than that, as far as us coming up in the era that we did, hearing our mother's music or just listening to them good ass music, we didn't know or care or give a damn what city that Parliament fuck Delhi come from, or, or mm -hmm. didn't even know who, who, where the fuck Earth, Wind, and Fire live at. Who gives a damn? You know what I'm saying? The music is the shit. We they wasn't. You know, and we didn't see the personal. We didn't care about the bullshit that happened in the uh, in their personal lives. We wasn't privy to that, and it wasn't just because there wasn't no internet or nothing back there like that. People didn't generally give a fuck about your personal escapades no. like that, unless it made the news or some shit like that. Then okay, yeah. But other than that, it really didn't matter what city you was from, as long as your music was the shit. Yeah. Now it's um, now it's like it's like oh man, dude. Uh, I heard that Austin Dre farted in a bus last week, man, and, and somebody didn't like the smell, and we got it on YouTube right. and shit, so we got the video right. viral, and, and it's like, it's 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 all this all this image, because everything's associated with YouTube, and so, which is kind of a good thing, yeah. though, in a way, because I'm sure... Yeah, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. Yeah. I mean, it got its pros and cons, you know. There's so much, it's flooded with, it's inundated with fuckery on there, man. You got to filter through so much bullshit to even get <laughs> to get a, a glimpse of anything that's worth your, your fucking your time. Then, you know, it's crazy. You know what I mean? It's giving, you know, too many motherfuckers the opportunity to, to, to clutter this shit up. I was, uh, here's the thing, though. It, in, see, in Vegas, we don't have a real hip-hop sound. You know, like back in the day, there was no real sound. So I was always digging right. what other cities were doing. I, I tried to purposefully find rappers from other cities, you know. Uh, right. Like there was a group called JCD and the Dog Pound, and they had a song on there called St. Louis Niggas. And I was like, oh, they're from St. Louis? Oh, shit. Well, let me check them out. Let's see how they're coming out there. Right, right. Know? So I was always interested what other cities were doing, and, and I guess that's why, right. you know, I'm... You know, I've always been into that. So, well, you yeah, respect the sound, yeah. But just because you're from a certain city and that other city doesn't have, like, like I'm not, a, I was never a huge fan of the east, east coast, the far east coast rap. You know, that kind of like a tribe type mm -hmm. of style, that kind of abstract style. <clears throat> I was, right. honest, I always liked more of the, you know, the west coast stuff. Maybe it's because I'm from Vegas, but that doesn't mean you go, oh, that shit sucks, man, because they're they're from right. the east. No, it's it's just a different style. It's like any other type of music, right? You know. Right, that's the thing about hip hop that I really love as far as music. Now, I mean, as far as me, we I, I come up with what they consider the golden age era of hip hop, which was the best. And I don't give a fuck what nobody says, <laughs> still was the best. Like I, said, I don't give a fuck how many music. records nobody sold and how much money all these other motherfuckers made because all the other people opened the doors up for them and made an you know, opportunity available for them. It's, that era was the best from anywhere from 79 to 89, all up in there. And being that that's the age I came of of age, that's going to be my most memorable or impressionable age. So all the shit, whenever I was 15, 16, all them songs, all that shit is going to be, I'm going to remember all that, all the TV shows, all the movies, all the shit when I was 15 and 16, when I thought I was a shit, it's just going to stick with me for the rest of my life. But for us coming up in that era, though, in the um, 70s, 80s, then we got the privilege of having exposure from the music from our mother, our parents, our our grandparents. And, you know, so we got the, all of the R&B, the funk, the jazz, the rock and roll, the blues, all of this shit. When we come up, we listen to all of this fucking music. It wasn't like, it was just one kind of music that we listened to or was exposed to. We got the privilege to be exposed to all of this different type of music and coming up even like with the new wave era at the same time with the and the punk shit with the um hip hop. But we we listened to this shit in Detroit. We had techno house, you know, all this shit, man. I mean, we got pioneers of, the, of that shit that came out of here. And um, when hip hop really hit, that was the one genre that encompassed all other genres of music. It just like took all that shit and put it in the blender and made a smoothie of that shit. Like this is what we coming with and we can do it like that. You can have hip hop with classical, hip hop with country, hip hop reggae, hip hop rock and roll, hip hop mm -hmm. fucking world Indian type of fucking music, with sitars in there. It don't fucking matter. This is hip hop. But you can't take no fucking jazz and then blend it with no uh you know uh country just country <laughs> you can't do it it's just separate shit they it, it, it's not you can't do it but with hip hop you can take all that other shit and make and, and make it hip hop 
uh, with that element and be cold as hell with it from classical, yeah. like you say, to country, to jazz, to blues, to funk, to rock and roll. All that shit is hip hop. When we, when we get a hold of that shit, put that boom bap on that shit. And, and it doesn't matter. We, we encompass in the music, all of it. And that's the, that's the one thing hip hop does. It brings everything else together. Well, that, you know, it wasn't nothing, nothing that was just for one people or for one certain month. Or it was just a, a lifestyle. You know, like mm -hmm. I said, um, if you like this shit, it's how you like to talk. It's how the music you like, how you dress like this shit. Like, you know, is this the way you live your life? Then that's hip hop lifestyle. It's not, you know, people get it confused. Like rap and hip hop is the same thing. This is rap music. That's hip hop music. No, rap is an element of hip hop. You know, of course, we go through this a million times. You know, they should already know, basically, that it's the, um, you know, MC and B-boying, uh, graffiti artists, you know, DJing, you that know, is the, the foundation, day. and knowledge. Yeah. That's what the, that's the one fucking element they eradicated out of it, what a DJ too, <laughs> but, yeah. you know, knowledge. They they like fuck that you know they like that ain't a that ain't a foundation of what we basing our shit on. It's just some ignorant shit. Get out here and say the same fucking word a million times over and over in a song, and you got to hit. I'm like, damn, you know, I be trying <laughs> to dumb my shit down and do that because I see that that's what everybody getting money off of. But at the same time, I'm like, fuck that because I don't know fucking sheep. I ain't following everybody. I can only do it to a certain degree. I will talk to you in your language so you can understand me. I can talk to you. In a, in a fucking educated ass uh, vernacular, I can talk to you with some fucking slang ass, ebonic shit. It, it, it depends on the situation. So, you know, that's that's like, I, I can maneuver like that. Well, that's, but, um, that's, uh, nah, uh, overall, I, I was going to say, that's kind of the way it was back then, though, with everything, though, with music. Like, like now, like you go on the Top 40 station, Top 40 used to be. Uh, you'd hear Bon Jovi one minute, and then you'd hear, uh, you know, you'd hear uh, After Seven the next minute, and then you'd, right. hear, and then you'd hear the next song would be uh, Billy Ocean, Billy Ocean and, and shit, then you know? Pat Benatar on the next, and this is on the same station, right. you know? Right, and that's yeah, the kind of thing yeah that's what I, I love age, about yeah. music and about how when we came up with, man, you know, fucking, um, you know, goddamn Thomas Dolby and... Yeah. All type of shit, man. The cars, man. We used to listen to all of this shit. Blondie, she came on the scene with that shit, blew everybody mad. She like, shit. I want to, I want some of this hip hop too. Mm -hmm. But it was <laughs> like, you know, it, I mean, just the rock shit. When you go back and you listen to, like a lot of the most famous, you know, hip hop songs, you know, straight up rock, you know, lifted right off a of rock hit from, from whatever, from um, uh, KRS One uh, when they did the dope beat. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying. Nah, nah, nah. Yep. Dan, 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 all that shit we love that shit man and it's the same it's all music it all revolves around each other it's, it's all related so <clears throat> it's hard you know for me to have a closed mind about a certain type of music man because oh, i was exposed to so us, much and i'm still i'm still learning and 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 uh, adopting new different uh genres and styles of music man the older i get and that's what I like about the uh, like songs, like for instance, Incinerate them is is it's like a rhyme about. It's almost like like you're just showing off, showing off your lyrics. Like this is I'm lyrical, and that's the way it used to be. Like right. I used to actually get take pride in that, and that's what I was talking about earlier, in that ability to mm -hmm. construct like, like to just to just like flow, you know. Like and it's now it's not like, right. oh, it's not as important. It doesn't seem now. It's all about this image type thing. While well, before it was actually taking pride in like the actual like ability to go. Damn, he just put that shit together like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like it, it, right. It, it, it I mean, we come up private. We came up uh, as lyricists, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, because you know we we wasn't in it from the business aspect so much uh, in the beginning. Yeah. We write, we write and rap to impress other lyricists um, instead of like when you are the artist and you're trying to sell records. You write to impress the crowd, the listeners, the people who you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. who ain't in it. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like you talking right. to. To them, we're not, not and this is, but when we come up, you know, I mean, it's, especially because it was in a battle era, you know, we we, was, we were battling when when we first came out. That's what it really was out about at that time. And so, but at the same time, so you was battling, and at the same time, you was trying to for you trying to impress uh, other other lyricists, other mm -hmm. MCs. <clears throat> so I, I would be more impressed if Rakim was like. Oh, did you hear what he said? You know what I'm saying? Yes. Then if as, as uh, 10 or 20 regular motherfuckers saying that was sweet, I'm like, yeah, okay, but 
you didn't really get what I was saying. You know what I'm saying? Now, when a motherfucker like Rakim say he got it, he got that, oh, that was sweet, how you flipped that one metaphor or shit like that, then I'm like, that that geeked me the fuck up. That motivated me even more because I'm looking at it from a different perspective. I had to learn to look at it from the the people, the consumer more so, uh, or the, the average fan that's not going to be all into the technical dexterity of your shit. Some of them are, don't get me wrong. Most of the heads really are. But other ones, I, I had to realize that a lot of them, they don't really even listen to what the fuck you're saying. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. If your music is banging, if that beat is banging, they're going to like your song. And then eventually, then they'll they'll catch on and they'll listen or whatever. They might even sing along, but that doesn't mean they're going to really be more into what you're saying over the more than how it's sounding while you're saying it. And um, so that's the difference between lyricists writing uh, for each other as opposed to us just writing for the public in general or just trying to get a people what they want. We're trying to impress each other and make, and make you know what I'm saying, try to be in the best amongst, you know, have a little inside competition with us uh, as, as MCs more so. But, you know. Mm-hmm. Hey, well, why don't well, that's, we... That's, we, we, that's what we grew up with, so we dig that, whereas opposed to now, everything is a show. You know, and it's just right. like you got rappers that can't even rap <laughs> that are up there. <laughs> Man, don't get me started on that shit. That's, <laughs> you know, well, we, yeah, we'll, we'll obviously. Get in, yeah, we'll get into that uh, a little bit uh, maybe in our, in our last segment because we got uh, what's what's it's, uh, get, actually the next track is uh, is Get Your Money Up that I want to play. Up. And uh, all right, well, yeah, well, Get Your Money Up. Let, let, let me tell you about that one. That one actually, my producer, Killer Smooth. <clears throat> he's featured on that song. Well, I don't know. I'm featured. It's his song. I'm featured on it. So, you know, I wanted to let him get his shine, like I said, because not only is he a producer, he is a, a artist as well. Um, like I said, he, he rhymes, he sings, he produces, uh, mix, engineer, master. This guy, he, he a jack of all trades, but he good at, at at it though. It's like it ain't like he a master of none. He a master of a couple of them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but so yeah, that's what this is. Get your money up. It's Killer Smooth, uh, starring Killer Smooth. You know, uh, with myself on there, bringing um, bringing up the real on that third verse, closing them down. But yeah, that's Killer Smooth. That's my man. All right, so let's get to it then. It's uh, get your money up on the A D E P out uh it's E P from uh, Austin Dre. We're back in a bit. Minute, minute yeah. once again. Get your money up uh, on the Nothing Sacred interview. Back in a bit. Yeah. Yo. <laughs> get your money up. Get your get your money up. Get your money up. Get get your money up. Get your money up. Get your get your money up. Get your money up, get get your money up. What you got to say? I ain't never had a problem, bruh. What you mean, nigga? I'm grinding, put the diamonds up. I don't understand. What you mean? This ain't for your brain. I ain't even gonna work. That's cool, but get your money up. What you got to say? I ain't never had a problem, bruh. What you mean, nigga? I'm grinding, put your diamonds up. I don't understand. What you mean? This ain't for your brain. I ain't even gonna work. That's cool, but get your money. Money for the chasing, yep. I'm grinding full of patience yep. On the block to serve my patience Like the rhythm with the cadence yeah. Creep around like robbers Cause yep. these niggas smell like coppers Blocks, texts, and choppers Sell so fast to pay is proper All I wanna do is eat Cause I struggled all of my life Cause I got to feed my kids And I still ain't got no wife So it's all about that look Put that money in that safe Put that money in that work And yes, of course, these niggas gon' hate I ain't even got no license I don't even drive no car I'm a soldier on my feet And I keep the concrete hard See, the streets have never been soft Like a target, you get shot If you never change your rules Then that trap you bang get hot What you got to say? I ain't never had a problem, bruh What you mean, nigga? I'm grinding, put the diamonds up I don't understand What you mean? This ain't for your brain I ain't even gonna work That's cool, but get your money up What you got to say? I ain't never had a problem, bruh What you mean, nigga? I'm grinding, put your diamonds up I don't understand What you mean? This ain't for your brain I ain't even gonna work That's cool Get your money up, get your get your money up, get your money up, get get your money up, get your money up, get your get your money up, get your money up, get get your money up. You niggas 
wanna be pressed up on my money just like Lattice Chris Put that on your bitch, your bitch. just thought your ass was rich Smoking mirrors don't mean shit, but them racks say a whole lot I don't front for no now nigga, what I got is what I drop Keep it real, I never been fake, keep it real, I keep my own plate Wallin' off, never again, just had to clear the whole slate I'm gon' tell it like it is, what you see is what you get I'm a master of my hustle and I never flip the script Shit, what you got to say? I ain't never had a problem, bruh What you mean, nigga? I'm grindin', put the diamonds up I don't understand What you mean, this ain't for your brain I ain't even gonna work That's cool, but get your money up What you got to say? I ain't never had a problem, bruh What you mean, nigga? I'm grindin', put your diamonds up I don't understand What you mean, this ain't for your brain I ain't even gonna work That's cool, but get your money up Get, 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 get your money up yeah. Get your, get your yeah. money yeah. up awesome, Get awesome, your awesome, money up Get, 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 get your money up Get your money up know Get, your, get your money up Get your money up, get, get your money up what? Gotta get my money up, yeah. every time the sun come up okay. Gotta make my mama proud every time her son come up yeah. Haters try to stop my grind, what? they must be out their mind oh, Niggas my. couldn't stop my shine, even if they dropped a dime nope. It's inadmissible, yeah. bitch I'm invincible Killing all these villains on the general principle okay. See I'm a veteran, you yeah. sick I got the medicine We kick your door right off of the hinges if you don't let us in what? We gotta get it smooth, hit a lick, hit a move Let's stack this paper cause you know we ain't got shit to prove nope. Our team's strong, yeah. green long, our theme song right. Is get your money up buddy because your team wrong your What you got up. to say? I ain't never had a problem bruh What you mean nigga? I'm grinding, put the diamonds up I don't understand What you mean? This ain't for your brain I ain't even going to work That's cool but get your money up What you got to say? I ain't never had a problem bruh What you mean nigga? I'm grinding, put your diamonds up Get your money up, get your money up, get, get your money up. Yeah, get your money up. Kill a smooth and awesome Dre. You know, get yeah. down on the track. You know what I liked about that track though, man, is is um you know, you got it's it's a money song. You know, it's one of these songs that that you could hear on the radio, but yet there's substance to it. You guys are actually, right. you know, getting on some lyrical shit and on some concepts. It's not just you know right. about you know the standard stuff. You know. Yeah, well, I mean, because yeah, that's the whole key. I mean, it ain't it ain't nothing new up under the sun. So it ain't really like you can come up with some new you know, never heard before words and concepts and shit, but it's just how you say it, not really much, pretty much what you say. Just like the same thing is not what you do, is how you do it. You can do some shit and motherfucking, you know, be cool with it. You do the same shit in a different way. You be fucked up. So it ain't about what you do is how you do it. So you can talk about the same shit because that's what they want to hear. They want to relate, you know, but just do it in a different way. Or, you know what I'm saying, just try to put your own spin and your own twist on it. Like I say, you know, everybody make smoothies but everybody's smoothie ain't the best it's depending on how much uh you know of this and that that you can put in there to get that perfect blend or whatnot so I <laughs> but that. yeah well you know i do have a question kind of switching gears a little bit what what happened with the because for a while you were doing a lot of stuff with psychopathic you even had a show on their um w fuck off radio and uh what happened with that you still working with them or what's going on no nah, we're not working together anymore but you know hey it it you know, we uh, what you call it? It what you how you say it? Creative differences, irreconcilable kind of differences. Um, <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, I, what did you say? I can't even understand. I can't even ex the, uh, remember the word that I'm looking for. But no, I mean, I don't work. We worked together before. You know what I'm saying? We had some fun, had some good times, and now we don't work together. So I'm gonna just leave it at that. You know, <laughs> I ain't trying to really get off into all of that, that right now, though. But That's yeah, true. you know. Right, right. Although you know what, man, gotta give a shout out to your Do Dubla. That's your your uh, your nephew, is he? No, that's my cousin. Yeah, that's your my cousin. cousin. Oh, okay. Well, shout out to Do Dubla. Actually, we had him back on in the shit that irks me days too. Real cool dude, man. So you yeah. know, he was real fun to interview. Yeah, that's fam right there. Yep. 
you guys, uh, you, so you guys will still be doing some stuff, I'm sure, at some point. You and Dodo. Uh, probably so. Probably so. You know, hey, he fam, so that's how it go. You know, he's doing his thing right now, and I'm on some other stuff. So, but you know, you know, eventually, I'm pretty sure we'll go. Um, you know, put some shit together again. We got some classics up on that done already. A lot of t- people ain't even heard yet. So, yeah. Speaking of that, for your crackhead fans like myself, <laughs> when is all that stuff going to be dropping, man? Where we can we can hear some, you know, because you kind of you keep us waiting for a while, you know? <laughs> man. It ain't on purpose, man. There's a lot of bullshit going on behind the scenes that everybody know dealing with life in general. But yeah. <clears throat> we everything has been coming together a lot um, sweeter, you know, this last year. So uh, with the team that I'm working with now think we can make it happen man like i said i'm dealing with um a company called tdx um they're out on the east coast man and they've been dealing with um, my man sean and uh and uh mg uh c doc they got a company out there man they've been doing big work man as far as um like mixing mastering um uh, video work um uh, graphic arts all of that you know just making sure that everything is get putting together in a professional uh package man and getting it out there so <clears throat> We've been working and, um, you know, uh, definitely um, putting it together with the hardcore committee and my team here as far as um, getting uh, this content up and, you know, uh, organizing everything, man, as far as getting the package ready. Because, like I say, I'm a pack rat. I have all of this shit, but we just have to get it organized, you know, and so we can present wise. it to you. Mm-hmm. So by the end of this year, <clears throat> we plan on having... um a couple of extra projects out, man. One of them is going to be the um, actual uh, remastered version of You Can't Hold Me Back album uh, with also a couple of unreleased tracks added on to that. And that's what we're going to uh, put the DVD on with that as well. Um, it's like a collector's edition uh, as well um, as a, uh, a CD with all like singles um, that were out. Some of them were released, some of them weren't. Um, and then it's a whole lot of just like straight straight underground shit i mean uh sessions man you're gonna hear live sessions we just be you know just in the lab like all day just going off the dome you know at the, at this point man just ch- testing beats and shit like that man and we just got a lot of classic um unreleased raw rare ass footage man and uh you know recordings that we're gonna go ahead and package up and put together <clears throat> for everybody man and um like i say we'll have it um we'll have all of that by the end of this year man i'm just all of this, all this time, I'm finally getting to awesomedrake.com up and, you know, running right now. It's just set up right now for the ADEP, but, you know, we, of course, we're going to be adding all different type of features and um, different uh, pages and stuff to that as we go along. But it, at least that is up and running now. So we can't have a, uh, you know, a, a platform to get all of the uh, information and uh, product and content out there to you as soon as possible so i would say by the you know by the end of this year um because like i say they we are kind of busy and you know they're working on a few other major projects right now so we got to get in line but um you know like i said it'd be worth the wait man I, and i've been wanting to do this for a long time too so but um and i, I still have to go through a lot of bullshit to experience so i can be able to you know have that up under my belt too because all of that shit just strengthens you man and you know, so I mean, that's gonna be a lot of different. I'm gonna hit them from a different angle as far as the content and the subjects uh, that I, you know, usually talk about. Because uh, usually people say, "Well, um, you got to just tell them." Because I'll be talking to them, like in an interview, I might explain certain things or whatnot. But in a record, and I'll just I'll, I'll talk about something else. It's like almost I don't put all of my personal fucked up bullshit on my records. And a lot of oh. times my people run like, you need to do that. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> people are going through the same <laughs> shit and they want to know, they want to see, you know what I mean? They, they ain't the only one, you know, or whatever. You might can give them some type of inspiration or anything like that. So, you know, and then even recently, man, I'm telling you, I done went through some shit recently within the last year that I ain't never experienced in my whole life. Some harsh ass shit. So, but I'm here. I survived. You know what I mean? So, and at the same time, yeah, um, talking about it in the interview is good. Getting up your chest. But when you put it on a record, it's it's like immortalized in a different type of way. It's solidified. And, it, it, you know, you can go back and refer to that. And it's like concentrated to be like, boom, um, you know, capture that time or whatever. Uh, and, it, you know, it's therapeutic for me. So I'm going to try to, you know, like I said, man, so it'd be a different, uh, um, you know, some of the, some of the, other songs, the newer songs is going to come out. You might hear some of the shit, you know what I mean? It'd be, it'd be explained 
you know, in a booth, uh, more so than just in a regular sit down type of interview or talking interview. You know, I put it because I've educated myself on a lot of those songs, you know, just my songs that I've done over in the past that I had to research on before I, I've done it. Because, you know, I don't just sit up and talk about stuff and make up stuff or whatever. I want to have, um, you know, facts and things like that when I'm trying to speak on certain things. But it's like a, a, a lesson to myself. I didn't taught myself certain things just by writing a rap. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm going to be hitting y'all from a few different other angles, man, and trying to, you know, get a little more shit off my chest or whatnot and let people know what, what happened, what, what we went through, what we've been through. That's, part of that is going to be with the DVD, but at the same time, that needs a soundtrack. So, hey, it's going to be some more, uh, uh, you know, I guess, uh, heartwarming, gut-wrenching, confession-type shit coming out. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and we like that. I mean, as fans, you know, we love that kind of shit. Like, uh you know, right. Esham dropped a, a thing a few years ago, I think, called um, something about a, an under or an independent label or rise and fall of an independent label. Oh yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah, man. So, you gotta lay it on the line sometime, man, and people be like, "Damn, you know, for real, that's real shit." So yeah, I, I, that's kind of where I'm because I'm like, even though I'm my my profession is in the public eye, what not, I'm profit as fuck as a person. Um, and it's hard to try to, you know, I, I, it's hard to talk about certain shit for years and years. Shit, I wouldn't even tell my mother my personal shit. You know what I'm saying? You're like, why you don't talk to me? Yeah, I'm like, well, shit, I'm trying to figure it out my damn self, you know, because she'll put that pressure on you and shit. Tell me, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Damn, let me figure it out. But, you know, that's that's how, you know, that's a mother's love. You know, I love our boss, so she love, you know, she go, she be concerned. So I know how that feeling is now. When I be, I got my own son. I be trying to get him to talk to me and tell me what's going on, and that shit be frustrating as hell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> oh yeah, uh, <laughs> but well, they, yeah, they so they trying to trigger off conversations like, "Is there anything you want to know, son, about sex? Maybe <laughs> <laughs> he ain't ready for that yet. He only seven. <laughs> uh, well, hey, well, my, my dad age, used man, to do that yeah. to me when I was a teenager. You know, like when he thought I was thinking about some shit, he was like, "Want to force this shit on you?" You're like, <laughs> you're like, is there anything you want to know about? You know, some maybe something sexual? You know, and I'm just like, <laughs> you're like oh, that, you just made it worse, Dad. I, <laughs> I wasn't thinking about that. Right. Now I am, and now it's really awkward, Dad. So, <laughs> well, man, I mean, this this has been cool. You know, um, the last track we're going to jump into before before we go is uh, is Fredo. And uh, right. give us a little background on that, because that's a story rap, man. You've never really done one of those before. Yeah, well, I like that, man. You know, Godfather series is, you know, one of my favorite movies, man. And um, this one, you know, based off of, obviously, the character Fredo. And, um, uh, you know, a lot of people, man, um, everybody know Fredo, man, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? Um, and if you don't, then it's a good chance that you are Fredo. So, you know, think about it. But, <laughs> you know. You know, it just it's tell a story about a person that had too much ambition, person that had jealousy, you know, with a, you know, uh, people would betray you to try to get ahead, you know what I'm saying, sell out, different things like that. And it's just like a cautionary tale or just a basic, you know, rendition of, you know, the, the fate of Fredo, what happened to him, you know, in that, uh, in the Godfather uh, series or whatnot. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, smart. yeah, it's like a no Fredo movement we're going to come up with, man. We don't need no Fredos around, man. You got to be loyal, man, and, um, you know, stick with stick with your people, man. And, uh, you know, don't, don't, don't try to sell out, sell yourself out, sell your soul for any type of monetary gain or, you know, anything like that, man. It's, you know, when you hear it, you know, you, you, you could tell. I mean, if you ever saw the movie, people that didn't even, never even saw the movie, they probably can still get the gist out of uh, out of the song based on, um, you know, what they hear. But, um, yeah, it's just about really um, just 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 be, be, be true. You know what I'm saying? Be true to you, yourself, your people, the ones who really was there for you and stood by you and uh, held you up when nobody else would or whatever. But don't try to take the first opportunity you, you can get to try to move ahead and, um try to uh sell your people out. I mean shit, Fredo damn near had his brother killed, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, mm -hmm. put his, put him out there like that. You know what I'm saying? He felt 
like, you know, his brother was trying to do him wrong or whatever, when it wasn't really that. And Fredo wasn't ready to be, <laughs> you know, to be running shit. <laughs> right. So, like, you know, you know, wait your turn, step back, chill, whatever. But, you know, mm-hmm. hey, Fredo had other plans, you know, but um, those plans got foiled, <laughs> you know. Well, but, let, me yeah, so. let me ask you this about that track, too, man. When you recorded that, did you have a cold? No, man, but it was like I wanted to sound a different way. Um, I didn't want to sound that I didn't want my tone to be the same way that it was on the other songs. And um, so it was just like I just put myself in that mode to be like almost it's like I'm like a narrator. I'm like narrating that song. You know, it's like I'm. I'm I'm looking. It's just like I'm watching The Godfather. I'm just explaining it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it it's like I'm sitting back, and I, I just wanted to have that kind of I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Uh, fucking uh, well, almost like name? a Godfatherish um, tone kind of to it. You know? Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I wanted. I tried to almost. It was like I'm talking like instead of like flowing like rapping more so you know like like i'm narrating almost or Mm -hmm. something like that so yeah i just i wanted to i I did that kind of purposely to to try to distinguish that to separate that song it it almost sounded like you were like you were hoarse a little bit like you know it didn't have your sharp Mm -hmm. gray delivery that i'm used to hearing you know it was almost almost like this you know but now like you said being a narrator it's a little different than being a rapper you know what i mean yeah yeah it was almost i was getting my damn um uh, James Earl Jones. What's the other motherfucker who never uh, oh, ages God and shit? Or... Yeah, yeah. God. You know what I'm saying? Some. I, I, yeah. So I was kind of like, wasn't. I, you know what I'm saying? I, it, it, I, don't, I can't. I can't explain it. It wasn't like that was awesome, Dre, per se. Uh, right. You feel me? It was just like <clears throat> a different character telling you the story. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? In, yeah. in that in that tone. So it wasn't like I was me in that persona. Uh, it wasn't like that was awesome Dre uh, talking like that it, it was a certain some person telling you about this the situation <laughs> yeah so that, that's so that kind of the kind best of kind of way I... and if and obviously if people want to pick this album up they can go to awesomedre.com um, oh and I do want to say this when you go there and you buy this be sure to go to the dashboard to get your download <laughs> go to the dashboard yeah, well, we had a we had a situation when I when I bought the EP. Remember, Dre? Oh, did he drop? Uh oh. Oh shit. He, he may have dropped. I think he dropped, dude. Uh. Uh, all right. Well, damn. Um. <laughs> well, we're almost at the end of the interview anyway. Okay. So, so, so uh, you know, want to you want to just contact? Well, yeah. Well, that's, I guess we'll just uh, because it's gonna be kind of a, I can try to get him back real quick or um, well, we're recording right now. So uh, yeah. Oh, we could. You know what we can do? Um, yeah, let's. What we'll do is we'll jump into uh, to Fredo, yep, and then uh, we'll was, see if we can get him back, man. We'll see if we can get him back. And uh, okay, so I'll I'll, um, I'll go jump into that right now. So we'll jump into Fredo and see if we can get him back. So this is the Nothing Sacred interview. Uh, awesome, Dre. We'll get him back hopefully. Um, and uh, this is Fredo. So back in a few. Bye. I can handle things. I'm smart. I'm like everybody says. Like dumb, I'm smart, and I want to smash. Fredo, I love you. But don't ever take sides with anyone against the family again. Ever, ever, ever. You said there was something in it for me. On my own, on my own. Some suckers out here softer than Play-Doh If this was the Godfather, they would play Fredo For the game came to slay you like Abel Before he switched sides, they used to kick it like Cato Same stable, ate off the same table It was all a fable, he was just acting like Clark Gable Gone with the wind, and frankly, he don't give a damn Type of guy that's sitting on pounds, wouldn't give a gram He played the role, now it's time to pay Fredo He'll marry for your soul, it's time to pray Fredo he never knew this, never thought he could do this His own blood brother going out like Judas His style is funny and he acting suspicious Similar to G-Money, bout to nap with the fishes Didn't want it to begin, he just thought it would end Every time thought he was out, they just pulled him back in I can handle things, I'm smart I'm like everybody says Like dumb, I'm smart and I want to
Fredo broke his heart, they was down from the start But he made some dumb decisions that would tear them apart Fredo claimed to be smart and to know things Jumped ships, which teams smacked up by Mo Green They said that he was weak, plus he was high and he soft Didn't know he pledged allegiance to Jaime Roth They don't want Bortles, whores They should try truth, they ain't hardcore They hearts pump papaya juice They should kill themselves, try to learn to tie a noose Cause we all know they scared to let the trigger loose Stood by while killers tried to bury the Don Yet he wanna be the king, he barely a pawn So they tried another hit, but them idiots missed Now they made it on that list, fate sealed with a kiss The Don's still there, no fear, what up, motto? Al Neri took Fredo fishing on Lake Tahoe You're nothing to me now. You're not a brother. You're not a friend. I don't want to know you or what you do. I don't want you near my house. Was untrustworthy, slicker than oil Was not loyal, compared to real steel Was aluminum foil, took sides With the enemy to further his status Was the perfect definition of what A dirty rat is, making shady moves He was destined to fail, when he ceased To be loyal and unleashed a betrayal Fredos be selling their souls Quick to benefit, similar to Arnold First name be Benedict It's one thing to be known as a hater But totally different to be shown As a traitor, for no bread Fredo got laid in his potato head when he bled out near he said it was tomato red Or more like crimson or burgundy He was hurting, see, certainly feeling way worse than the worst emergency Straight trauma, consequences of straight drama It's a shame like in Fredo they had the same mama I can handle things, I'm smart I'm like everybody's safe Like dumb, I'm smart and I want the same Fredo, you're nothing to me now You're not a brother, you're not a friend I don't want to know you or what you do. I don't want you near my house. Fredo, I love you. But don't ever take sides with anyone against the family again. Ever, 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 ever. He said there was something in it for me. On my own, on my own. Oh yeah, Fredo, bitches, off the eight. Fredo. <laughs> so great, man. I'm I'm glad we got you back. Sorry, we had a little technical ass ram there for a second. You know, but no, uh, no, not not that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know, uh, so tell everybody, man. And I just want to let them know too. You know, they can go to awesomedre.com and and purchase the album. Um, but make sure, sure they check. Make sure they check the dashboard for their download. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. When you go to awesomegrade.com and you actually click the uh, the link we have on there, it's going to take you to rapcentralstation.com. Yeah, go ahead and just create you a little uh, quick little free um, account. You know, just put your password and your email in, and you got your own account there. And then when you uh, when you purchase your music, go back to your dashboard, and it'll be right there. Um, also, at this point now, you know, it's, um, it's on iTunes. Um, you can jump on iTunes and grab it. Um, Spotify should be popping up on there um, any day. It better because I paid my bread. But um, <laughs> yeah, so you can get it at those, um, you know, those lovely outlets right there, and um, more to come soon. And um, like I say, just keep it, uh, keep that awesome dot com, and then check um, check it out. We're gonna try to update some things on there to where you can get all of the info that you need. But um, yeah, man. So I, man, I appreciate it, man. Y'all have me on here taking the time, man. So I can um. You know, kick it a little bit, man. But um, definitely, man. Uh, shit, I can't wait, man, for everybody to really get a chance to to hear the music, man. The new, uh, the new music. Give it their opinion. I don't care if you like it, you hate it. Uh, it's all, it's cool or it's okay. Cause I want to know. You know, I need to know. Yep, there will be a link down below uh, in the uh, the link the, the description bar of awesomedray.com. So if you can click on that and go there and check that out. Uh, and uh, once again, thanks again for being on here, Awesome Dre. Yeah. And uh, the EP, once again, is A-D-E-P. It does not stand for Awesome Dre Eating Pussy. It stands for, or whatever, it can stand for whatever <laughs> the hell you want it to. So A-D-E-P is the album, uh, and it's out right now. It's all it's, just, it's all ready to go, obviously. So uh, check pick it that out. up, man. And Awesome Dre is also on Twitter and on, on uh, YouTube as well. So, you know, follow him, you know, stay up on Dre. 
Oh, okay. So I think he, we might have lost him again. Not sure. But either way, uh, once again, I am Cruise Control. And I'm Maxwell Silverhammer. And this has been the Nothing Sacred interview with Awesome Dre. Thanks again for Awesome Dre. Uh, I then uh, That's the, the story, story there, there, bitches. Bitches. Later on. See, See you next time on the Nothing Sacred. Later. Yeah.